doesn't love art supplies. Even Jenkins thinks art supplies are amazing. In here, we have a Filbert Grainier. And there's no cover on this. I've been noticing when Amazon has been sending brushes that they've come with broken covers. There was one I got the other day that was completely bent or no cover at all and just thrown into a bag. This looks like it's in good condition, so I think we're gonna be okay with that. But I did get a cat tongue that was completely destroyed, so I didn't add it to this video. I am also very excited about this because as somebody who is just really getting into art supplies, as you know, if you've watched me before, you'll know this, but if you haven't, I'm just going to mention it again, is I was allergic to all art supplies. I had an art career basically being a digital artist due to life-threatening allergies, so I couldn't touch art supplies and had always really wanted to. I felt just kind of bummed out that I couldn't paint or I couldn't use certain things without getting deathly ill. So after getting a diagnosis and treatment after what, 18 years, I think now, that's how long this art career has been going on for me. I can now use some things. I can't use things like oil or things that are very toxic, but watercolor and colored pencil have, uh, have been great. So my art supply obsession is big. And I know people who can paint or, or have had no problems with being able to work in supplies also have art supply obsessions. I mean, there's even a, a YouTube channel called, I think it's called like my art supply obsession. Anyway, we are all a special group of people, I believe. So in that, the reason why I was mentioning that, mentioning that is brushes, I've kind of stuck to rounds and haven't really explored a lot of other brushes. And I thought, well, now's the time. And when I saw somebody use this in a video, I just loved it. I paint a lot of portraits and this is really great for hair. I ended up ordering a smaller one too, and I'll make sure that I do a review and show you how to use them in the future. This is a Princeton Velvet Touch, one of my many favorite brushes. And then I believe these might all be brushes as well. Oh, okay, so we're gonna need some scissors for this one. Let's open them all and then we'll we'll talk about them here. So when I first started out, I started out with really cheap brushes. I started out with Dergato. And then as I decided I really liked it and I didn't have life-threatening reactions, I thought, well, I can invest in better brushes and see how they work. They might not be any better. Then I moved to the Princeton Aqua Elite and absolutely love these. These are a brush that I go to. Then I decided, well, why don't I try some Velvet Touch? And I like them both pretty equally. I think they handle very similarly. They're both really good brushes. They have their own things, but again, we can talk about that in another video. And then I purchased a Heritage. I purchased this liner here quite some time ago because I wanted to just try them out. And I really liked them. The other thing is, is I like brushes that are more stiff. And what I heard from the Princeton line is that the Heritage are more stiff than both the Aqua Elite and Velvet Touch. So I went ahead and I picked up a couple rounds. And they definitely have a different feel. Perhaps I'll do a video in the future where I'm comparing all three. 
but these are more of a, a plastic feel. These are more of a velvety feel. Both this and this, they have this almost soft velvet feel to them. They're both really nice. There's no, I don't like any one better for its feel. It's just really what you like and how it handles in your hand. They're all about the same size. I think maybe the velvet touch is a little bigger because this is a shorter one, but the other velvet touches that are normal size are around the same size here. So brushes, brushes, brushes. Very excited for that. And then let's move this paper out of the way. I picked up this Karen Dash 10 set of Neo Colors. Let's go ahead and open that. In the future, I plan to share more about these because I picked up a few from my local art store and completely fell in love with them. Oh, that's interesting. It opens backwards? Well then. And there they are. They are not glorified crayons. <laughs> they are actually very quality artist sticks. And there's Neo Color 1 and Neo Color 2. Neo Color 2 is water soluble. And since I, I love to work in water media, this is what I chose. And Neo Color 1 are not water soluble. This little packet is just adorable. All right, let's put that to the side here. Okay, the next thing I purchased is this fine line applicator. I saw somebody use it on a video to do really precise line work and artwork. And since I like to do lace and other things, I of course have no issue with doing it with a really small brush, but I also wanted to test out something new and, and see if it's, it's worth it. I also like the idea too, unlike with a brush, being able to maybe even make it a thicker, more bubbled up line, uh, a raised line. It's kind of hard to do that with a paintbrush. I mean, you can do anything with a paintbrush, but that may be another way. So we'll check this out at another time. The other thing I purchased was the Schmincke masking fluid. The reason why I purchased this was because I saw the Mind of Watercolor use it. I'll make sure I link that video below. And I have a problem with latex. I have a problem with chemicals. This seemed to not be of the same ilk as most masking fluid, as well as it doesn't peel off rubbery. It kind of flakes off. Uh, he did a review on it and I was like, well, this sounds like something this sounds like something that would benefit me. I have not needed masking fluid yet, but I actually started working on a painting and I was like, "Oh, this is a perfect example of how masking fluid is going to make my life so much better." Let me get that painting. So, in this painting, there are these sticks and sticks and branches. And in the background, I want it to be black. The idea of going around with black gouache or black watercolor seems like a huge headache. And in the past, I would have done that before I knew that there was a thing called masking fluid. And that would have been a really intensely annoying thing to do. But in using this masking fluid, I can go in with this tiny little applicator and go on the edge here of each of these branches, fill it in, and then once it's dry, go over it with watercolor and then peel it off. Also, the other thing that Mind of Watercolor said over there, Steve, he said, I don't want to call him the Mind of Watercolor because that's not really his name. We're going to call him Steve because that's his name. He said that it doesn't ruin your brush. And so we just talked about brushes. Brushes are expensive. They are not cheap. So this doesn't ruin brushes. It comes out really easy. 
hey, this looks like a great alternative to typical masking fluid, which is really exciting. So I'll let you know how that goes. Maybe we'll do a video on it. And the watercolors that I purchased here to test them out are, da -da -da, drum roll, Schmincke granulating colors. And let me tell you, <laughs> Amazon again is, I mean, I appreciate Amazon. I'm very thankful for Amazon when I need something quickly because sometimes I can't get it from Jerry's or Jackson's or Blick or any of those places. And the one thing that often bums me out about Amazon in the same way that it bums me out about brushes is that often they just throw them in a bag. They just like toss them in a bag and then look at how messed up this tube is. There are times where I do send them back because I'm afraid that they may crack in how they, you know, how they get here. And if they have too much of a bend in them, then it can totally ruin the paint by having a crack and getting air in it. Either way, it just seems like lately a lot of the supplies I've purchased on Amazon have come like carelessly, and that's kind of a bummer. But let's get on to the good thing. The good thing is, let's check out these colors that I purchased here. And I picked up these five. Yeah, that one's real bad. I did not open these. I figured I would look at them more closely on the video once they got here. Yeah, like this one is, oops, that one is pretty bent up have to make sure that that doesn't let any air into it. But let's get into what we have here. So it looks like we have the super granulating. We have a Shire blue. We have a forest blue. We have a glacier green. We have a galaxy brown. And we have a deep sea indigo. And in the future, I'm going to share with you guys what these look like, but they are beautiful. And just so you know, that Daniel Smith also has a bunch of granulating colors. It seems like Schmincke has moved into that territory and are trying to give Daniel Smith a run for the money with all the different granulating colors. You know how it goes with different types of paint suppliers and brush suppliers, they wanna compete with each other in a good way, right? Which gives us artists amazing tools to choose from. And remember, you might love one thing, like I just love Daniel Smith, or I just love Karen Dash Luminance and Polychromos colored pencils, but it doesn't mean that I wouldn't use a Derwent, or it doesn't mean I wouldn't use even certain Prisma colors. No, I wouldn't use a Derwent or use some other colored pencil for specific things. For example, I absolutely love using Polychromos white over the Karen Dash white. So it's really dependent as an artist what you like. You may like all of the Schmincke granulating, and you may not like the granulating Daniel Smith. You might like Schmincke just for their general watercolors, and you might love all the granulating colors like Lunar Violet with Daniel Smith. You can love all the things. I do. Why can't you? <laughs> all the things. Okay, so speaking of these, I went a step further. I bought them independently, but they were having a sale on this. Dun, da, da. And this is a special edition. This will for sure get a review. And there you go. There is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is how the tubes are supposed to look when they when they get to you, right? Like nice and and pretty. 
But I used to not like granulating colors. I, with all my work, I've always loved like the smooth watercolor. I've never enjoyed the granulation. It just didn't work for me. But now that I've shifted some of my work, I'm falling in love with the granulating colors of uh, various watercolor. And I love it. So we have a Tundra Orange Galaxy Rosa. Is it Rose or Rosa? Galaxy, no, no, Galaxy Pink. So then we have Deep Sea Violet. We have Tundra Blue, Glacier Blue, Deep Sea Green. We have Forest Brown, Tundra Green, Galaxy Brown, and Glacier Black. So we have a good amount here to share. And if you could see the ones that I picked, obviously in the blue green family because that's what I love but I believe now they are up to 50 of them around 50 I feel like they were at 45 and then they added another set and they have these special edition sets like you see here but they also have sets like the Shire set or I think it's called the Forest set I don't remember the names offhand, but I'll make sure in the video I share them so you can look them up. But they have all these really great sets. And I was looking at potentially purchasing a set, but I didn't love all the colors in one set. So this is what I pulled from, from those sets independently, because you can buy them open stock. And then I thought this special edition was good. On top of the fact that my partner also loves this stuff. So... The colors that perhaps I didn't like in this, he was like, I love them. And so we're going to trade out and share, which will be great. And speaking of Schmincke, let's talk about these. This is Aqua Bronze and there's three of them here. So we have Aqua Bronze Pale Gold. We have Aqua, aqua Bronze, it's kind of hard to say, Rich Gold. We have Aqua Bronze Copper. That's a tongue twister. So I love to use gold in my artwork and I watched a couple videos. Well, I actually watched a lot of videos on all of these different types of golds, gold pens, gold ink, gold watercolor, all the things to find something that works. And I'll make sure I link that video if I can find it down below with the YouTube um. I make sure to link that video down below of the one specific video I watched that was extremely thorough and helped me choose that these were what I wanted to use. I used to use Winsor & Newton. It's still really great. I have it over here and this is mixed with gum Arabic, but it actually gets really hard and it's hard to come up. It's beautiful, but this is a lot easier to use. You don't have to mix it with anything. It's just, it's rich and beautiful. And I plan to do a review on these to share them with you, but they're gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. I mean, it's as close to gold leaf as you really can get. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this art supply. Oh, oh, before we go, I just wanted to share this sweet, sweet little thing I got from my best friend. So I got in the mail today, this sweet little card, which I just love. And this journal, there's two of them. We're going to check those out. One for me, one for Michael. They look like they're creative and fun. So we'll check those out. Crayola, well-dressed pets. My best friend is also an artist, so we we send packages back and forth, and it's a lot of fun. So that's super cute. And then who doesn't need a unicorn coloring book? Like, who, do, who doesn't need one of those? I'm pretty sure everybody does. Brings me back to my childhood. All right, well... I hope you guys enjoyed this art supply haul. It was so much fun to share with you. And I just wanna make sure that I thank all of you that are watching this video, all of you that are subscribed, those of you that comment and interact with me. 
it means so much to me that you take the time to be here. If you guys have some art supplies that you think that I might like or that might benefit me in my art, please suggest them below. I would love to know what some of your favorite things are. What are some of your favorite art supplies and tools? Make sure you share down below. And if you are new here, please consider subscribing and liking this video. And I'll see you again in another video soon.